Well, good evening, Clinging Ridge. I want to welcome you back this evening. Uh, let's get started with the word of prayer. Father God, Lord, we love you, and we thank you for all that you bless us with. And Father, I pray that as we go through this message tonight, Lord, that you'll just guide my words. Lord, that you'll open up our hearts and our minds to receive your word. We love you, Lord, and we praise you. And it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. So tonight we're going to be picking up where Colin left off. We'll be looking at Genesis 19. We're going to be going through verses 12 through 22, uh, if you want to turn there. Uh, have you ever found yourself uh, being rescued and didn't even realize you needed it? That's, I know that's like a very strange question to ask, uh, but maybe not for some of us. When I was, uh, when I was 18 and early into my early into being 19, uh, I had no idea I was really in, a, in such a bad pattern that was kind of spiraling downward. I w and I was just completely unaware of what was happening around me. I was enjoying life and doing what felt right, uh, doing whatever felt good to me. And then I met Christy. Uh, here was this sweet Christian girl that wasn't into all those things that I was doing. Uh, but of course, I was, you know, really into her. So I started doing the things that she did and listening to what she had to say instead of those other people I was hanging around. And it was only after that I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior that I realized that where I was head, I finally realized where I was actually headed when, when God finally rescued me and, and saved my soul when he, when he brought Christy to me. And that's where Lot kind of is right now at this point. He, he had already been taken prisoner once before uh, while living in Sodom, and yet he ran right back to Sodom after being rescued. Uh, but because he was not like everyone else there and because of God's love for him and for Abraham, Lot is in the process of being rescued. So this is Genesis 19. We're going to look at 12 and 13. It says this. It says, then, then the men said to Lot, have you anyone else here? Sons-in-law, sons, daughters, or anyone you have in the city, bring them out of, out of the place. For we are about to destroy this place because the outcry against his people has become great before the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. So if you remember back in, in, in chapter 18, God had agreed to Abraham's request that, you know, Abraham kind of negotiated down to the point where he said that if 10 good people could be found, Lord, would you spare the city? And God said that he would, but it's obvious that 10 people could not be found. So God's like, I'm going to destroy the city. So not only could not 10 people be found, but really it was Lot. God sent his angels in to save Lot and his family. And as Colin covered last week, back in verse four of chapter 19, it says that every last person in the city has surrounded Lot's house demanding that the two angels be sent out to him. You know, this, that right there is proof that there, there was no other good people to be found. But the beautiful picture that's being painted for us here is that God does not abandon the good to die with the wicked. Joshua 1, 5 says this, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you and I will not forsake you. God does not abandon us to this wicked world. He is with us wherever we go. And in this case, God searched out Lot to take him and his loved ones. See, God reaches out to the lowliest of us, no matter where we are, no matter how bad our circumstances, he does not abandon us. God would not abandon the good. In fact, in the case of Lot, he was encouraged to search out others. The Lord was not specific to just family members because if you look back at verse 12, he says this. He goes, have you anyone else here? He names sons-in-laws. He says sons. He says daughters. And then he says, or anyone. He says, or anyone. In other words, is there anyone important to you, Lot, that I need, that you need to go get to take them out of here? God was giving him time to rescue those that mean something to him. You know, this right here is proof that this is a call that we are to share the love of God with other people. Because Lot could sit there and say, you know what? I got a friend the next street over who I absolutely love and, and I cherish this friend. I need to go get them. But of course, we see that he didn't. 
But let's look at the response of his sons, his sons in laws, because he does go to them. In verse 14, it says this So Lot went out and said to his sons in law, who were to marry his daughters, up, get out of this place, for the Lord is about to destroy the city. But he seemed to his sons in law to be jesting. In other words, they thought he was joking. They didn't take him seriously at all. You know, is this not how some people respond to the call to salvation? You know, it, it's actually a little familiar to me because, you know, growing up, I grew up lost. I didn't, I, I didn't understand anything about Jesus or anything like that because I didn't grow up in a, what I would call a Christian home. But growing up, hearing about or seeing someone on the corner of the street talking about how the end is near and, and we need to repent, you know, I would, I would laugh at that when I— you know, I was lost and I didn't understand the seriousness of this warning. And how many people today looking at the church feel the same way about the message that the message of Jesus Christ. But the really scary question I had in, in preparing this was how many of us in the church feel the same way? Are we taking the call to repent, the call to the call that God's placing upon us? How seriously are we taking that? How often do we hear the call to action and yet we do nothing? Have you ever wondered that if you knew what God was planning for you, would you be better prepared? So it's like, if you knew God's plan, would you be prepared? Would you be more willing? You know, I used to thought I would believe it, but then I look at what the Lord told Habakkuk. In Habakkuk 1, 5, he says, Look among the nations and see, wonder and be astonished. For I am doing a work in your days that you would not believe if I told. So in other words, the Lord's saying, I can tell you my plan. I can lay it all out. I'm going to tell you exactly how it's going to happen. And the Lord says, I can tell you all that. He goes, and you're not going to believe me. In church, when I think about how myself and my family, just, just think about how we wound up here at, at Clinging Ridge itself. If God had told me that plan 14 years ago, I don't think I would have believed him. Cause I'm like, really, you're going to take, that's the, the direction we're going to get there. Why don't you just, if that's where I'm supposed to end up, just put me there. We wouldn't believe it. We can't because our human minds can't process what God knows. And here are these men being told by their father-in-law that the city is going to be destroyed. And they think it's a joke. They think he's, he's joking with them. You can only imagine the panic in which Lot is telling them this. Like, look, the Lord is here. He's got, he sent me two of his angels. They're here. They're telling me they're going to destroy the city. And I need to get all my loved ones out. And yet they're laughing at him. Could it be that maybe Lot's witness as a believer is so diminished that for him to speak of the Lord is met with laughter? How is your witness? If you were, if you were called to deliver a message, would people listen? I'm here to tell you right now, that you are called to carry a message. You are called to help rescue people from the depths of sin. You are told, if, if you told people you are a Christian today, would they believe you? Would they listen to the good news that you have to share? You know, we are called to be God's messengers, but to be credible messengers, our witness needs to be in accordance with God. Let's keep going. Verses 15 through 17 says this, as morning dawned, the angels urged Lot, saying, Up, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be swept away in the punishment of the city. But he lingered. So the men seized him and his wife and his two daughters by the hand, the Lord being merciful to him, and they brought him out and set him outside the city. And as they brought them out, one said, Escape for your life. Do not look back or stop anywhere in the valley. Escape to the hills, lest you be swept away. So first of all, have you ever hesitated when you felt like maybe God was telling you to do something? Now, I, I know that I have, but to recall a very specific one would be very hard. But sometimes when we hear something that we need to go do something, sometimes we will stop and we will hesitate and we'll freeze. And this could be somebody telling us face to face. Lot is receiving a message from God telling him not to hesitate and yet telling him to go and yet he hesitates. This is a message from God, you know. To me, that's a, that's a lot to wrap around. Like you have these angels telling you this, but then again, not in Lot's position. So 
Who knows how he felt? But I know that I have hesitated when I felt, you know, and sometimes I just sat and I just kept waiting because I wanted a sign, you know, God, okay, God, if I'm really supposed to do this, give me a sign that I'm supposed to do this. I've even ignored God when he has sent people to speak into my life because like, well, no, I, you know, God's going to give me a sign. I don't know what sign I was waiting for, a billboard, you know, Times Square sign or what, but that's not what it's supposed to be. When we feel God calling us to do something, we should act. We should not. What Lot did is linger because Lot, because he chose to linger, he was hesitant to leave. And, and, but why be hesitant to leave? He knows the city's going to be destroyed. He knows this isn't a joke, but Sodom was his home. It, it, it's what he knew. It, it's what, what was comfortable and probably too comfortable. You know, even believers can grow accustomed to the sin that surrounds us and even allow it to seep into our households. It is this that can be, that can cause a devout believer to become backslidden when we just allow sin to to linger around. And that's basically what we see from Lot. He was a man whom Abraham helped raise. He was taught by Abraham about God. He was saved by Abraham once before when God allowed the victory that freed Lot from his captivity. But he chose to stay in Sodom when he and his family were the only decent people to to really be found. But at the request of Abraham, God sent his angels into the city to retrieve the only good amongst the wicked. But Lot and his family hesitated to the point where the angels had to seize them by the hand. James 5, 19 through 20 says this, My brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. You know, sometimes we need that, that godly friend to come along and remind us of our responsibilities. Sometimes we need God to send someone to, to comfort and encourage us. You know, sometimes we need that spiritual kick in the pants to, to get back on the path to spiritual maturity. Sometimes we need to realize that God is going to send us that right person at the right moment to rescue us, even when we didn't realize we needed it. All right, let's, let's look at the last of this, 18 through 22. And it says this, And, and Lot said to them, O oh, no, my lords, Behold, your servant has found favor, favor in, your eye, in your sight, and you have shown me great kindness in saving my life. But I cannot escape to the hills, lest the disaster overtake me and I die. Behold, this city is near enough to flee to, and it is a little one. Let me escape there. Is it not, is it not a little one? And my life will be saved. He said to them, Behold, I grant you this favor also that I will not overthrow the city of which you have spoken. Escape there quickly, for I can do nothing till you arrive there. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zor. Again, Lot is showing, he's showing a lack of trust in the Lord. Lot, Lot has spent so much time living in the city that the idea of moving, the hill, moving to the hills seems almost a little frightening to him. But does the Lord always call us to a place of comfort? You know, it makes me wonder how many missionaries are not serving in the mission field because they're afraid of where they would be called to. It makes you think how many pastors are still sitting in the pews because they're afraid to stand up and to lead and to teach. How many children's workers, youth leaders, life group leaders are sitting in a state of fear because they don't, they don't know what's ahead of them. The ability to answer God's call is the hardest we face, but the most rewarding This interaction we see between Lot and the angel is proof that God does consider our fears. He considers them. He looks at them. Instead of insisting upon Lot and his family fleeing to the hills, he allowed him to go to Zor. This was conditional that they moved quick, that that they had to move quickly as, their, as this was their entire intent was to save them from Sodom. So they needed to move quickly. They had to get to Zor because they were not going to destroy Sodom until Lot and his family were safe. And later we see that Lot does come to his senses and finally he does obey and he does retreat into the hills. You know, sometimes when we least suspect it, God does come calling. 
And we need to be prepared to answer to the children of God, not living a devoted life to him. I say this, he will pull you out of what has drawn you back to the world. To the lost, I say this, he will pull you out of the darkness and into the light. You know, I, I remember when I was lost, I had no idea I was lost. I didn't realize how lost I was. Not until he rescued me. I thought my life was good. I thought I, thought I was happy. But after I, I got saved, how lost I was became a reality. John 8, 12 says this. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Wherever you are and whoever you are, know this. No matter how bad a situation you are, you are in, God can rescue you from it. For those oblivious to what I, to, to your situation truly is, I pray that God opens your eyes to allow you to see this truth. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you and we praise your holy name. Lord, we thank you that at the right moment and at the right time, Lord, that you come, you send your messengers, Lord. Lord, that your Holy Spirit comes and rescues us from, from the, the pitfalls and the dangers that we find ourselves in, both spiritual and, and physical dangers. And Lord, I pray as, as we consider our daily walk, Lord, as we, as we pray to you, as we study your word, Lord, that we, we find ways, Lord, to do good in your name, to, to listen for your voice, Lord, to, to listen to hear what it is that we are being called to do. Lord, I love you, and I praise you, and I ask that you just continue to bless this church. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I love you, church, and we hope to see you again real soon.